Welcome to today's Daily Thought. And this week we're thinking of the hand of God and the way scripture uses this metaphor to describe something of God's power and action in his world. We've already thought about the hand of God in creation and salvation. And today I want us to think of it describing his providential guidance, his overseeing care over our lives. And to do that, I want to take you to chapter 7 and 8 of the book of Ezra. First, I need to give you a little bit of uh, historical background. God's people have been in exile in Babylon for 70 years. But in 539 BC, the Persian Empire defeats the Babylonians and Cyrus, the new king of Persia, allows the Jewish people to return to their homeland in Israel. And many of them go back and under Nehemiah's leadership, they rebuild the walls and they rebuild the temple. And that period is covered in Ezra chapters 1 to 6. But then in chapter 7, uh, nearly 60 years uh, afterwards, Ezra uh, appears on the scene. And he is sent there by the Persian king Artaxerxes. And his mission is to instruct the people in God's law. Uh, the people were still quite insecure. Their covenantal bond with God was somewhat lax. And Ezra, who is a priest and a scribe, comes to help to re-establish the law of God and the, the people of God as the distinctive chosen people. And what a journey it was, 900 miles, uh, travelling from Babylonia, about Babylon to Jerusalem, it took four months and chapter 7 records Ezra being sent by Artaxerxes on this daunting mission. Chapter 7 verse 6, Ezra went up from Babylonian, he, uh, Babylonia, he was a scribe, skilled in the law of Moses that the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. And the king granted him all that he asked, for the hand of the Lord his God was on him. And then verse 9, on the first day of the month, he began to go up from Babylonia. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, for the good hand of his God was on him. And then verse 28, blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. And who extended to me his steadfast love before the king and his counsellors. And before all the king's mighty officers, I took courage for the hand of the Lord my God was on me. And I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. And you see what Ezra is saying? That at a human level, the king of Persia, Artaxerxes, seems to be behind all of this. But verse 6 tells us that the king only granted Ezra, this permission and this mission, because the hand of the Lord God was upon Ezra. And then Ezra blesses God who put the whole idea into the king's heart. That's why he could take courage, for the hand of God was on me, he says. And then chapter 8 tells of Ezra actually arriving in Jerusalem and uh, tells how he set about recruiting uh, fellow leaders to help him uh, go about his task. Chapter 8 verse 18, and by the good hand of our God on us, they brought us a man of discretion. It was a very dangerous mission. But verse 22 says, I was ashamed to ask the king for a band of soldiers and horsemen to protect us against the enemy on our way. Since we had told the king, the hand of our God is for good on all who seek him, and the power of his wrath is against all who forsake him. And then verse 31, Then we departed from the river Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our God was on us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambushes by the way. Now you look at those verses again, you just can't miss the repeated references in those two chapters. Six times in all, Ezra speaks of the good hand of God upon him, going before him, clearing the obstacles, enabling him to perform his task. And in our service for God, whatever that may be, we can also seek the good hand of God upon us, the hand of favour and the hand of blessing. May that be so for you. Amen.